Today's video is brought to us by Skillshare. More on them at the end of the video. How can you have a glow up past the age of 40? We're going to talk about the inner work that's necessary in today's video. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. If you saw part one of this video, we talked about having a glow up after the age of 40 and we talked about looking good in that video. I will leave it in the I card up above. But if you're just joining us right now and you're wondering what is a glow up, well, a glow up is a mental, physical, and emotional transformation for the better. That's what we're talking about today, but today we're talking about the really important work. It doesn't matter if you look so hot and amazing on the outside. If you don't have that inner work taken care of, it's not going to fully be a glow up because really it is about that inner transformation. And the reason why I'm focusing on the age of 40, because in my personal experience, it has taken me this long to get to a lot of these points. Now I'm only discussing five key factors in today's video, but there's probably 50 key factors. So if you wanna see a part two to this video, give it a thumbs up. The first key to inner work that contributes to your glow up after 40 is your individuality. And you sense this as you age because you start to realize, okay, we are all similar as humans, but we are all so unique as well. If you think about it like this, we all have a nose, right? But each and every single one of us has a different nose. Nobody on earth has the same nose that we have, <laughs> okay? Same with our fingerprints. We are unique individuals. So you might have spent the past few decades conforming to maybe what society expects of you or what your friend group was like. You know, maybe when you were in college, you were like all your friends in college. And then when you became a mom, you emulated the other moms. And we find ourselves sometimes being chameleons where we mold into these people in order to fit into life, into, into friend groups, into society. But as you age, you realize the importance of your unique individuality. And there might be aspects of your personality that are not trendy or even modern <laughs> or popular, right? But it's like the older you get, the more you realize, I don't have that much time left. This is who I am and I want to live it and celebrate it. So of course you can express your individuality in many different ways, through the way you look, of course, through the way you dress, through the way that you carry yourself, but also through the way that you live your life with the things that you choose to do, what you choose to read, how you choose to spend your time. My friend Micah Meyer calls this your brand. What is your brand? <laughs> you could think about it like that. And how do you express your individuality? Now I have a lot of quirky aspects to my individuality and I think you've probably noticed this if you watch my videos I just I don't care <laughs> I don't care I'm like you know what this is who I am and sometimes I'll put something on Instagram of uh, something like related to style or maybe a poem or a quote or something and I get all these people saying oh I don't like this and no this isn't good or it and you know what I don't care I don't care because that's that's my individual style, that's my uniqueness, my individuality. Everybody is different. So it's like, I want you to be not afraid to express that. And yes, you might stand out a little bit, you might be alone, you might not have found your people who also care about the things you care about. But if you just, if you hold true to that, you never know who God will put in your path. You might meet a kindred spirit, a best friend who gets you. You might meet a group of people who fully understand you. Individuality is key. Don't squash it in order to fit in. The second key to the inner work of having a glow up after the age of 40 is, of course, confidence. Now, I do think there's a reason why people say you get more confident as you age. And here's my thoughts on this. So I think that every mistake you've ever made in your life, every failure, every rejection, while at the time might seem extremely irritating <laughs> and troublesome, and it might be something that brings you sorrow, but I want you to take heart because every time you stumble like that, you make a mistake, you can pick up the pieces from that and rebuild yourself 
with more confidence. And this is something I've done because I, I've made so many mistakes. I've had so many failures. I've been rejected so many times. And it's like that expression, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You come out of it realizing, A, you're human and you're going to make mistakes, but B, you cannot please everybody. And that gives you a certain level of confidence. So I am one of those personality types who is a big people pleaser. I like to just not have trouble. I like to please people. I don't want any drama, <laughs> you know, but as I age and obviously on this platform, I realize you just, you cannot please everybody. And there's always going to be people who are displeased with you, whether it's your family or an acquaintance or someone at work or somebody online. And you have got to let that go. You cannot be pleasing people all the time. You have to have that confidence in yourself to be your individual self and to realize that you're not going to please everyone and that's okay. And you can be confident in your decisions and who you are. And honestly, the older you get, the easier that is because you just get tired. <laughs> and now that I'm 41 and I've been dealing with this my whole life, I realize that life is just too short for me to worry about, did I, did I do this wrong? Did I say the wrong thing? Should I have done this? Now it's important to analyze yourself, but at the same time, be confident in who you are. It's like when people come to me and they critique my style or they critique something that I've done. I know in my heart that it's coming from a genuine place. So I don't allow their critiques to get me down, to lower my confidence. I mentioned this in the how to remain unbothered video. I actually use the criticism and the negativity that I get as fuel to be better. So just transmute that and transform that. And as you age, the confidence comes, but that's a key part to a glow up is being confident and owning your individuality. Okay. This might be the most important tip for me anyway, but tip number three is to discover your passion again. So you might have completely squashed your passion as an adult because as a child and maybe you're a student in college, you have the time to freely express yourself and explore your passions. And then when you become an adult, things get heavy. You get married and you have rent or you have a mortgage and then you have kids and then you have bills to pay and you've got stress and maybe you have debt. And you know, it's like all of this stuff contributes to the heavy weight on your shoulders. And as soon as you know it, you are an adult who works, who looks after other people, serves people all day long, and then veges out and numbs yourself in front of television. And that's like the cycle, that's the hamster wheel. Finding your passion, again, is maybe the biggest part of having a glow up after 40. What, what is it that brings you joy in life? What ignites the fire within you? What do you love? Maybe you used to play the piano or the harp or the guitar. Maybe you used to love going to art galleries and looking at art, or you're a painter yourself. Or maybe you used to go on hikes or used to run marathons when you were younger. Do you see where I'm going with this? Maybe you used to write poetry or read poetry or read novels. I mean, the list is endless, but we all have passions. And the trouble is that the heaviness of life can weigh us down and we just slowly stop doing those and exploring those things. And this is particularly important for mothers because you are giving so much of yourself all day long and you're serving other people and you're looking after your children and you're, you know, you're doing all of this. Don't lose your identity and your passion in that. It's so important for your kids to see you as a whole individual. And I always say this to my children. I say, I am my own person. I am a person, <laughs> you know, I have passions. I have interests. Yes, I, I can read poetry, I can play the piano, I can look at art and I can cry over a book that I've read. It's so important to not lose that. So I was watching The Prime with Miss Jean Brody on Acorn TV and the whole premise of the show, and it's based on a novel, is that Miss Jean Brody, she has just turned 40 and she has declared that she has entered her prime. 
And Jean Brody loves the arts. She loves uh, paintings and philosophies and music and all of that. And that's where she enters her prime in fully not only exploring it for herself, but teaching it to her students. And that's what I want us to do. I want us to enter our prime. It is your time. And you don't have to be over 40 to do this. If you've realized that you have lost your passion through life and all of its cares, slowly start to bring it back. That's why I like doing the chic assignments, to encourage people to write poetry, read poetry, look at artwork, listen to music, because it's important for us. It's that mother culture that Karen Andriola talks about in her book that is so deeply important to us that we should not lose. The next key is to have compassion, to have compassion and a lot of grace for other people. And I think, I'm looking at myself in particular, there are issues that I am very passionate about and I still am passionate about them. And when I was younger, I would go about them the wrong way as I was exploring how to tackle these issues in the world. And I would have a more aggressive, combative stance. So for example, I frequently would talk about the trashiness in modern pop culture and how modern pop stars, you know, they, exposed too much and little art to what they do and it's all about sex appeal and sex sells and all of that and and I felt that a lot of the women pop stars in particular were degrading themselves. It still grieves my heart to see the latest music video or the latest this or that doing this or that on social media because our young people are looking at that and they think that that's normal and I'm so I'm still passionate about that. I'm, I haven't lost that passion but I have compassion for those people and the people who defend them. And I realized that for me to call that behavior out wasn't the best way for me to tackle that issue. The best way for me to tackle that issue is to provide an alternative here on my channel where I try to explore elegance and classy living and the importance of being an elegant lady and how that can help you in life. And so I've transmuted compassion and I have compassion for them rather than disdain. So whatever you can't stand in life, what do you want? Okay, show that to the world. And that's where I'm coming from here. And the final tip that we are going to discuss today is ambition. Now this is not meant to be interpreted as ambition with work and making money. Now it's fine if you have that, ambitions to advance in your career, I have that. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm talking about ambition here specifically, and I'm going to read the definition to you, which is a strong desire to do or to achieve something, typically requiring determination and hard work. Desire and determination to achieve success. So what is your ambition in life? Your ambition might be to homeschool your children and do it well. Your ambition might be to finally learn to cook this year and enjoy it. Or your ambition might be to rise to the top of your law firm. It doesn't matter what your ambition is. What are your goals in life? You have to have something to look forward to, to propel yourself toward. This is going to transmit a glow up in you because it's going to give you a drive and something to look forward to. I always have a lot of people who write to me about writing books and I'm writing a book and how do I do X, Y, and Z? And I'm just always happy for them that they are writing the book. You've, you've got to write the book. You have to sit down. You need to do it. Have that ambition and the goal. And the way that you implement that goal, as we learn through Atomic Habits, is that you work on it a little bit every day. So all of these things work in tandem to create a glow up in you. The individuality, the confidence, the passion, the compassion, and the ambition. They all work together to help you be a more well-rounded person. Now, of course, there's so much more to talk about, okay? This barely scratched the surface. But I hope that this covered some of the main pillars for you and ignited something in you. Before we go, I want to thank our sponsor, Skillshare, for bringing us today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They have classes on everything from illustration, design, photography, writing, and editing. I've used Skillshare to learn how to improve my Instagram and YouTube channel. Right now I'm checking out this class by Yasmin Cheyenne on writing and journaling for self-discovery. Talk about a glow up process. Skillshare has no ads and they are always launching new premium classes. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So thank you so much to Skillshare for bringing us today's video. 
And thank you for joining me here on The Daily Connoisseur. I truly hope that you enjoyed this video. I would love to know about the inner work from your own glow up process. Let us know in the comments down below. Keep calm and remain classy and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.